cows enjoyed not one but two Swan regattas this last week, with both the Swan 45 Gold Cup and the Swan European regatta being run by the Royal Yacht Squadron. The Swan 45s had a very competitive 21-boat six-nation fleet for their World Championship, and they raced windward lured courses from a committee boat start. The regatta got underway on Wednesday in tough conditions, with a shifty southwesterly of between 25 and 35 knots and frequent rain squalls. The American entries set out to celebrate their Independence Day by taking the first and third spots after the first two races, with Alex Roper's plenty in the lead thanks to two second places. William Douglas's Goom Bay Smash was in third, behind Glyn Williams' British entry, Wolf in Sheep's Clothing. Day two was equally tough, and despite another strong showing by the Americans, Wolf in Sheep's Clothing moved into a five-point lead. Plenty lay in second after another consistent performance, with Goombe Smash holding on to third. The third day featured a longer round the cans race from the squadron line, and it was another windy day, with 30 knots of southwesterly breeze. This race was won by the British entry Fever, which posted their third win of a regatta, but the American crew on Plenty finished second to hold on to second place overall behind Wolf in Sheep's Clothing. Saturday delivered perfect conditions, with sunshine and a solid southwesterly, giving extremely tight racing throughout the four races sailed on the day. This was a crucial day, as Plenty scored an uncharacteristic 12th and 8th before ending the day with two firsts to take the overall lead in the regatta. Goombay Smash made it an American double by taking two wins in a second and fourth to take second place just two points behind Plenty. Fever ended up third overall, four points behind, but Wolf in Sheep's Clothing slipped to fourth after a mediocre day in which seventh was their best result. The final day featured two races which were sailed in the lightest wind of the regatta, with the wind building from 5 to 15 knots through the day. The first race started in a light southwesterly, and the fleet split, with half going right and half choosing left. But the better pressure was on the right, and of the top four overall, only Goom Bay Smash was in the right place. Over on the left, Plenty and Fever were going slowly, and they eventually rounded the top mark in the high teens. At this stage it looked all over for Plenty, as Goom Bay Smash moved into the lead at the bottom mark. But the conditions were far from stable, and on the second beat, Plenty again went left, hoping for a break. And she got it. The pressure built and a large shift lifted her through the fleet to round the top mark in fourth. With Goom Bay Smash losing the lead and finishing second, the two American boats were now tied on points at the top of the leaderboard. In the second race, Plenty again had to work her way up the fleet, but with Goom's Bay Smash finishing ninth, Plenty's fifth was enough to give her the world champion's crown by two points. Fever took third as top British boat, and Wolf in Sheep's Clothing was fourth. Twenty yachts in Class A and twenty-six in Class B contested the Swan European regatta. The strong winds throughout the week delivered challenging conditions ideally suited to Swan sailing. The European fleet sailed off the squadron line, with two round the cans races each day, apart from Friday, when they sailed a single longer race. Sir Peter Ogden's Swan 601 Spirit of Jethu set their seal on Class A from the off, with two wins on the first day. Lying second were Graham and Libby Deegan's Swan 46 Akarana, with Richard Loftus's Swan 65 Desperado holding third. At the end of the second day, Spirit of Jethu still led, but the largest boat in the fleet, Desperado, had moved into second place, with Akarana dropping to second. The long distance race was sailed in very windy conditions, with Piet Hein Backer's Swan 53 Silver and Swain taking the victory ahead of Spirit of Jethu, which retained the overall lead. Two races were sailed on Saturday in perfect conditions under sunny skies, and again it was Spirit of Jethu out front. A second and first meant that they wrapped up victory in Class A with a day to spare. In Sunday's final race, Spirit of Jethu won again, while Akarana's third was enough to secure her second place overall, ahead of Desperado in third. In Class B, 
the 26 boats were given a master class in consistency by Richard Balding's Swan 41, Philippides 2. We caught up with this fleet for Saturday's second race. The fleet bunched at the outer end of the line at West Bramble and headed west against the tide by short tacking up the mainland shore. The southwesterly breeze was pushing 20 knots, but at last the crews were able to enjoy sunshine and a breeze that was perfect for these boats. Again it was Philippides II which took another win, with Don Wood's La Quatre Juliette taking second and Alan Major's Moustique in third. Like Spirit of Jethu in Class A, Philippides II secured the Class B European title with a day to spare, thanks to five first places and a second. On the final day, Mark Jeffcott's Celine secured second overall, while Ben Mobley's Christina took third. The Royal Corinthian Yacht Club was running the Stug Perry Trophy for the Darings this weekend, alongside a six-metre regatta. Racing was over a Windward Leward course with committee boat starts, and two races a day were sailed on Saturday and Sunday. Saturday's sparkling conditions saw Defender, Dynamite, Audax and Defiant sharing the top four places in the 13-strong daring fleet in each race. Dynamite won the first race and took third in the second, but Defender came out on top at the end of the day with the second and first. Sunday delivered lighter conditions, which built from 5 to 15 knots through the afternoon and delivered perfect sailing conditions. Jeremy Preston's defender repeated her 1-2 result from Saturday to take the Stug Perry trophy. Charles Perry's defiant put together a first and second on Sunday to secure second overall, while two fourths were enough to give third place to Mike Bilbo and Frank Haynes's Audax. Dynamite, which had scored a first and third on Saturday, failed to race on Sunday, but still took fourth overall. With their world championship on these waters in ten days' time, the six metres mustered only six moderns and two classics for this regatta. In the modern fleet, Rob Gray's scoundrel, being steered by Graham Bailey, had the best of it on Saturday, with a first and a second, but compression damage to its mast meant we towed Scoundrel home to cows, its weekend's racing at an end. Robin Richardson's Bluebird scored a third and first on Saturday to put her in a strong position, ahead of Andy Ashby's Wildcat 2. Bertie Bickett's Scoundrel 1 proved to be the boat to beat on Sunday, scoring a first and second to take the weekend honours. Behind her, Robin Richardson's fourth and third aboard Bluebird secured him second place. Ante Razmilovic sailing Berta, instead of his usual etchels, had a much better day on Sunday, scoring a second and first to move up to third overall. In the two-boat classic fleet, Paul Smith's Caprice beat Peter Andre's Erica in each race. The Hunter 707s had their Southern Area Championship at the weekend, run by the Royal London Yacht Club. A southwesterly of Force 4 to 5 with sparkling sunshine on Saturday gave great racing, but some crews forgot about the strong tide. The 707 was designed by David Thomas 12 years ago and quickly grew into the largest sports boat class in the country until the emergence of the SB3 as current king of the small keelboat scene. For this championship, the class mustered just 12 boats on Saturday and 11 on Sunday. Mark Dell's Cacciatore and Paul Gray's Beaver Hunter were the only two in the fight for the title from the beginning, and eventually it was Dell who came out on top by one point, counting three wins and a second. The new Open 60 built by the Offshore Challengers sailing team was launched in Cowes last week. She'll be sailing in November's Barcelona World Race under the sponsorship of Spanish brewer Estrella Dam. The team has just announced that American sailor Jonathan McKee will co-skip of a new boat alongside Spanish sailor Guillermo Altadil, and we look forward to seeing the new boat out on its sailing trials soon. Next week, we'll be watching the start of Rourke's race to St Malo, the Contessa 32 Nationals, the next round of the Cow's Keelboat Series, and the start of the British Classic Yacht Club Regatta. See you then.